Hi, I'm Sarah with the Simeon Collective. And this month, we're going to be taking a look at some figures from Moonstone, a mystical fantasy game by Goblin King Games. I hope you enjoy the tutorial as you follow along. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and follow Monkeys with Fire for more fun and for more videos in the future. Today, we have received a Witch in Time set from Moonstone. And with this set, there are three little witches. Here we have Zoria, the Dawn Witch. Here we have Antonia, the Noonday Witch. She has an adorable little face. She's carrying a little cauldron here, and as we can see, it's full of something. And then we have Danica, the Dusk Witch. She's more of a, of a spoopy witch. Not only did it come with these three witches, but it also came with little additions for their bases. Some mushrooms and some crystals and how absolutely adorable are these. I love that they gave us some, some additions for the bases. I'm super excited to get working on these. And for this video, I think we will be focusing mostly on Zoria, the Dawn Witch. So some of these, they do need a little bit of cleanup and some, some of the support branches, so as always, I use, I have my Bondic in the black light to set the Bondic for any gaps or things that I might need to fill. Some good little snips and my X-Acto. So I take my X-Acto and we're just going to kind of clean up any little nubs or any little seam lines we might find. There aren't too many seam lines on this. There is some slight little flashing that needs to be removed, which we can use this. And then for some of these bigger ones here, we can just use our snips and get them as close to the figure as possible. And then we can get the rest with our X-Acto. Then this goes for the same for the larger stuff on the base. Some folks like to paint on here. I personally like to remove the figure and then put her onto a nail. So that way I can then put her onto a cork, which will then go into my hobby holder. So with this figure, she does come with the base. And when you cut her off of her sprues, you can put her in the base pretty simply, and if she was glued down. As you can see, she would fit in there beautifully. However, I'm most likely going to be filling this and creating her a more intricate little base, and I prefer to cut off her feet now to then get her onto a nail, so that way I'm not messing up any of the paint job and I can correct anything that might happen in the cut now before I put paint on her. So one more thing before we get to priming is to figure out the base. Since she seems a bit sassier than some of the other witches, um, I felt little flower just wasn't going to cut it. And this little mushroom and crystal set right here, I feel is a little bit bigger and could be maybe more fun on a larger base. But since I wanted to keep her on the base that she came with for this video, this one, also this one here, I felt, I don't know, just the clump of the mushroom seemed a bit darker. Like, they may, they maybe will go with Danica. So, I figured for her little base here, since she's barefoot, my guess is she's probably in a field of grass. So, I found the one little mushroom here, and then I have found this other little individual kind of little crystals that are growing up. So, I figure if she's going to be on the base and somewhat of a figure like this, or... And then we would just have the little mushroom and crystal maybe just growing off to the side behind her. Because she's too sassy and doesn't have time for any of that other fun stuff. So what we'll do is I'm going to prime everything. And then I will be making the base first. And the reason that I do that is because once the, the figure is done, instead of just having this figure that you just spent all this time painting, just sitting there waiting for a base. I like to have the base, so as soon as she's done, she can go on her base. 
So for the base, I'm going to apply some static grass. And I color the glue brown so that way when it dries, it will kind of help create a more natural look and it makes the grass look a lot fuller. And I'm using a little static grass applicator. So instead of the grass just laying flat, it will stand up. And so you just shake it until you get it all covered and you feel it's good to go. Once you get it to where you like it, that's when I normally turn it upside down and give it a few taps to knock off any loose grass. And as you can see, it's standing up now instead of just laying flat. Now it is time to place our little crystals and our mushroom onto our freshly grassed base. So I moved apart some of the grass, dipped them in a little bit of glue, put them where I wanted, and then I took some of the grass and since it's still a little wet, I just kind of pushed it around with some tweezers to kind of help fluff it back up. So now it looks like there's some little dirt patches that are growing some crystals and a mushroom. And there we have our cute little base. I'm going to attempt to show you all how I do my skin tones. First thing we're going to do is Army Painter, Army Green, and of course Water Plus. I have them over here on my wet palette. And first thing I'm going to do is paint all of her skin green. Everything that is skin, we are going to paint it green. Not a super thick layer, as most paints, just enough to cover. We're going to do that over anything that is skin. Once you have painted all of the skin green, it is time to let her dry. Now that our green has dried, I'm going to take some of this flesh wash. We're just gonna do a nice light coat over everything. If you feel like anything is too heavy, you can always thin it out some. I don't want it to be too, too heavy in the pools or, and pull up in her face, so I'll make sure to thin some of that out. But once you're kind of happy with where everything is, then you want to make sure that you let her dry or the figure dry 100% before moving on to the next step. Once your wash has dried, it is now time for the first layer of flesh, which I'm going to be using P3's Cardic Flesh. And of course, have a little bit of water plus on the side. And we are going to thin out the paint. This is where I'll sometimes use my hand to see what level we're at. And we are going to start going over the skin areas, especially the skin areas where it's going to be raised. Where normally, let's say your highlights would be, that's where we're going to focus a little bit more of the skin tone. We are going to go around the entire figure doing this. So once you get everything covered again, covered every bit of skin with the cardic flesh, but not super thick. And it's okay if you see the green still in there, that's fine. And not completely covering every bit of the face, but just mostly the skin that's shown or highlighted we're going to focus mostly on. So once we do this step, you really want to let it dry completely from here before going on to the next step. Everything has dried for the skin. And as you can see, I have given her little rosy pink cheeks. I've also given her some pink lips. And although it's kind of hard to see, she actually has a little green eye there. And what I did for her elbows and a little bit on some of her their skin, that kind of rosy pink, um, did the same kind of for her toes. You can see that sort of adds some dimension on her ankles, just to make her look a little bit more lifelike. So from here, we're going to start working on her actual clothes and then hair today. Again, just to go over, here's what I used for the skin. And then with the lips, you know, you do a little bit of matching with your pinks and get the shades that you want. And then for her eyes, I just did a little bit of mixing of colors to try to give her kind of a bright eye. And then of course, your black and your white. And then I always hit it with a little bit of Ard Coat or a gloss to make it shiny. Um, another thing is on the card art or box art, as you might say, she did wear makeup. I normally do not outline my figure's eyes with black. However, for this one, I did give her a tiny little cat eye kind of eyeliner type look. And I'm pretty happy with how her skin's looking. So now we are just, like I said, going to work on the clothes. And then we're going to have to figure out what nail polish color we want to give her. Because this little lady has some nice little long nails. 
Beautiful sculpt, beautiful little figure. Okay. I love to have card art or reference photos. Yes, coming up with your own colors is also really fun, but the art for this is so beautiful that I wanted to try and replicate these colors. So it looks like she is wearing a green dress and red to orange hair. She has a red apron and almost like an orange kind of corset. So for that, I know that a darker green might be the base for her dress, red for her hair, and for the little front apron. We're also probably going to want to play with the orange, and since it is more leathery, I really love Reaper's little olive skin tones to help with that, so we can add those with the orange. And then from here, I will probably use yellows with the green to brighten it up, using some of my other shades of green to also bring up those highlights. And then we're going to be needing a dark brown for her leather bag, so sometimes I like to just pull out the base colors, lay them down, and then go from there. And of course, always water plus. Make those paints smoother, make them last longer on the brush. Miracle water. So let's get started on her clothes and hair. As you can see, I have laid out all of the base colors for our green dress, red apron, orangish corset here, and of course a leather bag and what will soon be red hair. In the box art type photo, it looks like she had black nails that kind of fades into her skin tone. So a little bit later, I will also be panicking over trying to do the same thing to her hand. But for now, I'm going to go in and work on all of the clothes, bringing up the highlights. Now with the original colors on my wet palette here, we have the green, the red, the brown, and orange. I mix brown with a little bit of the green, the red, and the orange to create all of the base colors. And so what I will be doing, instead of using a different paint for each and every layer, I will be using those core colors and then adding browns, adding white, adding maybe a lighter shade of that color or a yellows to help bring up those highlights and make them pop. Now, sometimes people like to use a lot of different paints for each and every one, you know, four different shades of red from four different bottles. That's great. And sometimes I will do that. However, I like to sometimes just kind of organically bring up those colors by mixing in other colors. All right, so I've brought up all the highlights and created some textures. And then I even did the dark fade on her hands into her arms to match the card art. And so what I'm going to do next is make a darker glaze to put on the center sections and all of the material. I might do a darker brownish green, maybe like a brownish red and then some brown on this just to make it look like she's not brand new. Kind of make it look like the material's a little bit worn to kind of match with the textures. For her hair, I did a workup of red to orange and yellow, and then I toned it all down with a light brown or a very thin brown glaze. So instead of just throwing on a wash, I am doing a glaze, which is taking the paint and thinning it down and applying it deliberately. I don't want it to necessarily settle in the creases and areas as you would with a wash. I want it to more so tone down the color of the paint. So that's what I'm gonna be doing next. So as you can see here, I have added the glaze to her entire outfit. I've also kind of brought up the buttons and her little orange gem here. I have done the glaze over the green and adding a bit more brown towards the bottom to make it look a bit more dirty. And I did the same as well to her red apron here, adding a little bit more brown to the bottom and making it a little bit more brighter in the center here. I've also added it to her satchel to help give it more of a weathered look. And again, you can still see here where it looks a little bit dirtier towards the bottom of her skirt. So I believe this little lady now is ready to be put on her base, which we will just do a little bit of glue for that. 
So as we can see, she's all finished and she's been put on her base with her little mushroom and crystal from earlier. And you can see how well the textures and the kind of dirt on the bottom of the material show through. This is such a great figure. I really enjoy painting her. We have the Dusk Witch from the set, looking all kind of gross and, and grungy. So having the extra mushrooms and things in the set was great. I was able to decorate each base with them. So really nice. And these are the game bases, of course, that they come with. But since there is three in the set and the other witch I was really in love with once I saw her, of course, I had to do her, but I did her in a slightly bigger base than the game base. I had a lot of fun with this one. Surprisingly, this one probably ended up being my favorite. She has her little jar full of eyeballs and an eyeball floating in her super green goop. She also has her mushrooms and crystals and little flower and crystal that came with the game set. However, for this base, I played around with AK Stillwater, doing the layered painting for the fish to make it kind of look 3D underneath the water, making the little lily pads and flowers out of playing cards. And I think this really ended up being my most favorite one. These little figures from Goblin King Games for the game Moonstone are ridiculously gorgeous and really fun to paint. They have so many different types from fairies to witches to humans to creatures and monsters. It's definitely worth taking a look at. I'm so glad that I got to paint these figures. And I hope you all enjoyed watching along. And again, don't forget to subscribe and follow Monkeys with Fire for more projects from the Simeon Collective.